All right, this is One Last Midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. Today we're going to look at automated printing. Why you would want to do it, I don't know, but you definitely can do it. The only possible idea that I would think of to use auto printing for, which would be some sort of automated scrapping solution. And we'll have a video on that and look at that in more in depth. But at any rate, here's the first part, how to print automatically. I hope you guys enjoy. In order to create an automatic printer, you're gonna need some things. Now, luckily, a lot of these items are free, such as the medium platform A, large platform A, storage printers, that type of stuff. All the other items, though, you're gonna have to pay for in bytes. Uh, you're gonna need the auto arm, the medium resource canister, storage sensor, medium storage silo, and large platform B to do some of this basic build stuff. And that's gonna run you roughly about 7,750 bytes, which is not too bad. For this specific basic build, you're gonna need the following. Two medium platform A's, two large platform A's, one large platform B, two small printers, three medium resource canisters, two medium storage silos, and one storage sensor. All of that's gonna cost you in resources, seven resin, two compound, one aluminum, one graphite, one zinc, one quartz, three glass, three plastic, and four titanium. And the power requirements for this build are very minimal. I mean, honestly, for the basic build, you're only going to need to power the auto arm, so you're only going to need one unit of power per second. Of course, when we look at alternate builds and the more advanced section, yeah, you're going to need a lot more power. But let's look at scenario one, basic automation. All right, the basic printer automation is really simple to set up. On a platform B, you're just going to have a couple printers and a couple medium resource canisters filled with resources. Now I have glass and I have plastic because I'm going to be making medium resource canisters. In front of the printer, I have an auto arm that has a filter of a medium resource canister. The reason for this is because the printer actually extends out when it prints and the auto arm has a habit of grabbing the resources off of the printer and then also grabbing the printer. So make sure that you filter your auto arm. Otherwise your printer is going to wind up in this storage and the printers are going to print on the ground. And so the auto arm is just going to pick it up and store it in this storage over here. We have a timer. Now the printers, require you to press a button to start it but also you can shut off a printer and so we need a timer of a significant length that will allow the printer to turn on but then also finish its print job before it fires another signal so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a storage sensor on this silo and the storage sensor is going to be set to full or empty and then we're going to take a pin and we're going to pin it on the medium resource canister and then also down down here on the ground so i'm going to place one in front of each printer and i'm going to attach an endpoint to a printer so that's going to send a signal directly to the printers and then what i want to do is i want to branch this pin and put it on the medium resource canister so what i'm saying is is when this medium storage silo is full or empty, send a signal to the medium resource canister and switch the value of the input or output. So when I set this off, we're going to manually enable it to start the process. But the first signal that gets sent after the storage silo gets filled up is a disable and it's going to then empty out this storage silo back into here. And once this gets empty, it'll fire off a signal again. You'll see this in action momentarily. The other two medium resource canisters need to have their output enabled. And once they do that, they're going to fill up the printers. And you can see that the printer resources got filled up and they're ready to print. So let's turn on our auto arm and let's start this process. The medium resource canister will distribute its items onto the silo. And then once the silo is filled, it will send a signal down to the printers to turn the printers on. And that should happen right now. And you can see the printers printing. And so once the printers are completed printing, the auto arm is then going to pick up 
the printed packages. The printer is now ready to print again, and once the, silo, the sword silo gets emptied, it fires off the signal to start the process again. And so this is a very basic automated printing configuration. This will continue to keep running as long as there's resources in the medium resource canisters to print the item that we're making. You can shut this off very simply by just disconnecting this sensor right here. The items will continue to keep printing and then once they're done, the whole machine shuts down. Let's look at a slightly different scenario. Now, the only difference between this one over here and this one is just a bunch of bigger storages. And also, I have in a ring all of the auto arms to point to this particular printer, allowing me to be able to change whatever I want to make, and then the correct auto arm will then pull the item from the resource canisters. Now, I highly recommend that if you're going to change the recipe on the small printers that you disconnect the power first. Mainly because the auto arms will start grabbing items and trying to place them in there. As you're cycling through whatever it is you're printing, the auto arms are going to start grabbing and trying to put it on there. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that the power is off, set up whatever it is you're going to print, and then turn the power back on again. That's why I have one power connection to this. Let's turn this whole machine on. Now, of course, this takes significantly more power because there are a lot more auto arms. But all these auto arms are engaged. And all I'd have to do is set the output on the resources that I want to use to enabled. And the auto arms will start grabbing and placing on the printers once again. Let's go ahead and turn on this auto arm. It is the same setup as the small one over here. And also the timer is the same one as well. So let's go ahead and enable the timer. And once the timer fires, the printing will start. And when it's complete, the auto arm will pick up the finished items and store them. And the process will continue until my resources are out or until I turn this off. Scenario number two, advanced automation. In our previous basic automation example, we we're creating medium resource canisters. And we're going to do the same in the advanced example, but I have created a fully automated system. The two resources that are required to make the medium resource canister are two items that can be built off of the soil centrifuge. Quartz to make glass and carbon and compound to make plastic. So I have set up a configuration where this is now completely automatic. It's driven solely off of these medium soil canisters and as long as you have soil in the medium soil canisters, this all will work. Now this system is primed and all ready to go, but what's running it? Well, once again, we have another timer and it's the same timer that we used in the previous two examples. What this is going to do is it's set up exactly the same way, but if you see the target line, it goes to all of the smelters to tell the smelters when to go on. Because I couldn't get a target pin to extend all the way out here, I just have a button repeater, which goes to the final smelter and then branches off and goes to both printers. So one signal, one timer is going to send a signal through the rest of this machine, telling it to turn on and off appropriately. Now, when the signal gets fired, what should happen is you should see all three soil centrifuges fire up, and they did successfully. Now, there's one little glitch over here on the very left-hand side where that soil did not get filled up all the way. Let's fix that before the next run happens. It's a very simple fix. All you do is take that canister off and place it over here, and that'll fill it up completely. And so that will resolve that issue if it ever happens to you. Now, you can see that the glass is getting created. Quartz is getting created. Glass is being made. Once glass is finished, it's going to get delivered to the printing station. Of course, the printers are automatically going to start consuming it. 
you can see that carbon is being made and that is being delivered to the chemistry lab and of course compound is being made which is also being delivered to the chemistry lab when the chemistry lab is complete it will produce plastic the plastic will be picked up and will be moved along the chain onto the printer which is waiting to print once a signal is sent again from the timer the printers will fire off and start printing. You might not get both printers to fire at the same time because resources are not coming out consistently, but at least you'll get one item to print pretty consistently. In this case, the next time the signal fires, two items will be printed. And like I said, this system will continue to run as long as there is soil. Now, a word of warning. There is a defect in the auto arms. If you have too many auto arms, the remaining auto arms are going to stop communicating and stop working. When I initially set it up, I set up this example first. And this example worked flawlessly. The only difference since the first example is I set up this second example where I created a bunch of auto arms over here. I don't know what the limit of auto arms is before all auto arms stop failing, but I have a feeling that I'm kind of getting to that limit already. So if that starts happening to you, if your automation machine starts failing for whatever reason, it's because you have too many auto arms running and go back and look at your other automations and your other auto arm chains and turn some of them off temporarily. All right, that was my video on automatic printing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did hit that like button, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you know when I go live and when I post new videos. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.